So this video, we're going to discuss why most people don't believe in astrology and what are some of the things that can turn a, people, turn a person off from this uh, celestial science of planets. The most important reason that people you know, lose interest in astrology is because they start to see that their sun sign or their daily, weekly, and early horoscopes is not coming true. Okay? And most of the people base this uh, concept of astrology as the holy grail of astrology. The, like most people, you know, even before I got into astrology, I just really thought that's it. It's just the sun sign that, you know, our astrologer looks at and he just gives a general prediction about everybody. You know, that's, that, that's it. That's my horoscope. Unless you go to a psychic who, who does an individual reading. But for those people who, you know, who... Uh, have lost interest or just lost faith in astrology, you've got to understand astrology is not just about these things. Astrology goes far deeper than that because astrology is not only requiring your birthday, okay, for your own particular horoscope. It requires your time of birth and place of birth. Okay, place of birth is also very important. And if you think you being born in Los Angeles versus you being born in San Diego, California, is going to be the same thing, you're absolutely wrong. Uh, because even an 80 mile difference in distance, okay, makes a big difference in longitude and latitude. And this comes into play in divisional charts only. Because astrology is just not about, you know, one basic birth chart showing where the planets were during the time of your birth. But astrology, it's about all the in-depth uh, analysis of each aspect of life. So let's say if astrological chart, okay, which is not your moon sign or sun sign, this is far deeper. It requires every single planet in the solar system, including the two nodes, north node and the south node, okay? It requires the analysis of these planets, the signs that they're sitting in, the houses that they're sitting in, because in astrology, there are 12 houses and 12 signs, okay? But, in Eastern Astrology, there are detailed charts. Those are called divisional charts about every aspect of your life. So let's say if you want to know about your career, you will not just depend upon one aspect of the astrological base, which is the main chart. That just gives you a surface. Uh, that just lets you scratch the surface of uh, someone's career. And now, if you want to go in depth and see exactly what this person is doing in a particular field, you have to go to a divisional chart. So let's say if somebody, um, you know, an astrologer, you know, not well versed into the art of astrology or the science of astrology, I should say, uh, will look at your 10th house or your birth chart, may, uh, he may uh, analyze the second house also, or the sixth uh, house as well, to see what your career field is going to be. So he might tell the client, hey, uh, you know, you should go into a medical field. You'll do very well. Now the client says, uh, okay, what medical field should I go into? Should I become an RN? Should I become a dentist? Uh, um, you know, family doctor? Uh, an OBGYN doctor or surgeon, what, what, do I sh what should I do? Then the astrologer will say, what, what are you interested in? What's your, what are you passionate about? Then the guy will say, well, you know, I love taking care of people and I uh, love, you know, um, providing public service. Then the astrologer will say, well, go into RN. Okay? But is that the accurate answer? No. What you have to do, and through Eastern astro Astrology, you open up the career house surgically. Okay, like a surgeon, you're going to open it up, you're going to look inside to see exactly what is inside, you know, the basket of uh, career for this person. So when you go into a divisional chart, like a D10 chart, which in Eastern Astrology is called the Tasamsha chart, how is it that you can analyze that? Okay, then the divisional chart, this uh, D10 chart, Western Eastern Astrology, this will show you what this person is really going to do in the medical field. And believe me, if it's 
shows medical field in the main chart, it is going to show medical field in the divisional chart as well. So in the divisional chart, it's not only going to tell you the, uh, the field that this person should go into, it will pinpoint, okay, this person should be in the medical field, yet he should be a dentist because of the fact his mercury is well placed and mercury is in control of teeth and it's in control of hands. So the uh, so once you analyze and we need to study, you know, the D10 chart, you're going to see, okay, this person will do very well as a dentist than just being an RN or a general doctor because most of his profits is going to come through that, uh, through that field. Or if you look into a D10 chart, you can say, well, look, you can really be really good. You're going to be a very good doctor if you become a family practitioner. But your main money is going to come if you become an anesthesiologist because Rahu is supporting that or some other planet is supporting that, becoming an anesthesiologist. So these, this is what the divisional chart does. It gives you a, a, a solid answer to what you should do and what you should be doing. Okay? And same goes for uh, love and marriage. Love and marriage is seen from the 5th and 7th house in astrology because 7th house is partnership, 5th house is romance. Now, is love and marriage different things? Absolutely, because 7th house is partnership. A marriage is not just romance and love. It's a partnership, which people don't realize. So if you just want to see, you know, how many girlfriends you're going to have or what kind of a romantic encounters you're going to run into, you look at the 5th house and the eleventh house, okay? But if you're going to look at the marriage, and if you're going to look at the timing of marriage, what kind of life you're going to have, you're going to look at the second house, the seventh house, and the eleventh house. Second house is a family, okay? What kind of family environment you're going to have? Seventh house is a partnership and marriage on the main chart, or on, on how your marriage life is going to be, okay? And eleventh house is the house of hopes and dreams and desires and gain. So what are your hopes and wishes? My hopes is to get the good career, to get a beautiful wife, to have healthy children and to just prosper. Mostly these are the wishes of everybody else. So then an astrologer will see, are his desire and his hopes and wishes are going to come true in this life and how much? But that's not it. Once you've analyzed in the main chart uh, that, you know, this person is going to get uh, married in this particular time, you know, but his wife might be this type, okay, or he may not get married at all. You can see that from the first chart. But then if you want to go into detail, it's exactly what the wife is going to be doing as a career. Is she going to be a housewife? His wife is going to be beneficial for this person? Is she not going to be beneficial for this person? Should this person get married at all? Okay. That is seen from a divisional chart called the D9 chart. It's the Nemansha chart. In the Nemansha chart, you are going to study the planet that's controlling the seventh house of the main chart and the seventh house of the divisional chart itself. Okay, and I mean there's a lot more methods to it, but I'm pretty much giving a basis as to how astrology works. Okay, so if you have lost faith or you're just like, you know what, screw astrology, it's not working, it's probably because you have not run into a right astrologer, okay? And um, another reason why people get discouraged, in India especially, is because the remedies of astrology don't work. Now, people wear rings. You may even find a rickshawal in India, or somebody who cleans your, you know, toilet and houses in India wearing, like, a blue sapphire or uh, a ruby or a pearl and... Yet, why are they, you know, cleaning toilets for a living and making less than one rupees or less than making five dollars a day? Why is this person driving, uh, riding a rickshaw and he has this yellow sapphire on him and pearl on him because I've seen it, okay? That's because gemstones have no relations to astrology. Remember that, okay? The only reason Jefferson came into play, which I discussed this in my book, Astrology at the Speed of Light, is because of the fact Egyptians were the one who taught the early
Vedic scholars about the benefits of gemstones and how they're actually related to chakras. And because uh, gemstones are not necessarily rel related to planets, however, in Egyptian culture, the stone blue sapphire has a very strong Masonic energy. It has a very mystical connection to the planet Saturn and to their god, sun god, Amun-Ra. And Amun-Ra is a very, it's, it's a very healthy discussion to have in another, another one of those videos because I've written them about in my novels and in my book of astrology about Amun-Ra. But really, gemstones have very little to no power when it comes to astrology. The only reason why a gemstone works, especially blue sapphire, because blue sapphire originally has a Masonic energy within it. And gemstones, and only, if they're natural, if they're, you know, charged properly, are related to your chakras. Chakras are the ones who are connected to the planet, and I've said this in my video before. Chakras are the ones who make the calls to the planet to improve somebody's life, not gemstones. Okay? It's not like some rays of, a special rays of a planet is coming through the gemstone. No. Gemstone works through a sunlight. Okay, it's the sunlight that needs to go through. But it's the blue sapphire and diamond. Why diamond? Because diamond has all seven colors, including the blue color of the blue sapphire. This is why diamond gives certain effect because of the fact it still is dependent upon the blue, blue uh, uh, light, the blue light of blue sapphire. The blue sapphire is any stone that has some sort of a blue uh, or a natural energy, a, bl a natural blue stone, you know, and a blue and a composite, some composites of blue sapphire, is going to show you some results, whether bad or good. And just because one blue sapphire didn't work for you doesn't mean that blue sapphire is bad and your Saturn is bad, so you should wear it. No, a blue sapphire, each stone has its own energy, has its own personality. So if one stone doesn't fit you. That does not mean the next will not. Try four or five stones if you have to. And I guarantee you one will give you a benefit result. And some may not give you any results at all. You can sit at home one, at one spot three days testing the stone. Nothing will happen to you. You may wear the stone. Next thing you know, you're getting the most strangest call on Saturday saying that, you know what, our company is doing this emergency hire. And I'm in the office today and I saw your resume. Look, we're willing to give you $100,000. Will you start with us on Monday? Or you're sitting there with a the blue sapphire and as soon as you get up, you twist your ankle. But what happens is these astrologers in India, they say, oh, your Saturn is bad. Do not wear a blue sapphire. Your Saturn is bad. This is going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you. No. Okay. Blue, blue sapphire has its own energy, it has its own personality, it's a very strong stone. Uh, and you may have seen even Arnold Schwarzenegger wear this during his uh, governorship in California. He was wearing a blue lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli is a substitute of Saturn. And Saturn is actually one of the most beneficial planets in astrology. It's not a misery giving, it's the most power giving planet. Because remember, India's superstar Amitabh Bachchan became a hit beginning from Saturn Dasha at the age of 34. Before that, he was unknown. But as soon as Saturn started, he, be, he went to new heights. So, these are some of the misconceptions that once a person knows, they will respect astrology a little bit more. And this is why I wrote my book, Astrology at the Speed of Light, and to the link of which is down below on the video. And I wrote this book because nobody else has written this book. That, that, that's why you should invent something. That's why you should do something. If you're going to open up a business, don't open something that is, uh, you know, at every single corner in your city. Open something that you are looking for. Yet nobody wanted to open it. Nobody had the things that you wanted. And that's when you should be like, okay, I want to open this door. Because I need it. That means if I need it, other people need it too. And I've read astrology books. Yet, I could not find that really answered a lot of, you know, things that I wanted to know about in astrology. Some of the myths and facts. Myths like, or actually facts, 
like if uh, you do astrological reading for somebody, especially your blood relations, your life may become full of misery. Because when you're telling somebody's fortune, and if you're not spiritually inclined, you're going to live a miserable life. And I see this every time. In India, if you go to astrologer, astrologer will be living in a one, one room apartment, struggling for money. Yet, you will see his advertisement or you'll be recommended by somebody, oh, I know this astrologer, he's so accurate, he will tell you, you know, what you need to know. But because they're not spiritually inclined, they do not prosper. <laughs> <laughs>